Welcome to our discussion with Josh Chavonic, who is our Senior Associate Registrar at Louisiana Tech University. We're going to talk today about the PASS option, and he's going to answer some FAQs. I want to encourage y'all to listen to this whole broadcast, and then if you have extra questions, ask them below, or you can email registrar at latech.edu. So, hey, Josh, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing good. How are you this morning? I am just fine. Um, so we're just going to jump right in and we're going to answer some frequently asked questions, okay? Um, the first question we have is, how do I request to change my letter grade to the pass option? So after grades are posted on a student account uh, to where it's visible on BOSS, after grading is done at the end of the term, you can evaluate what you want to do. If you're a graduate student, just know that A's or B's are the only two grades that can pack, go to a pass option. If you're undergraduate, it's only A, B, or C that could go to a pass option. Each case is different, but when you make that decision, you'll want to speak to your advisor. And if you do receive financial aid or anything like that, you definitely want to put them in the loop just to make sure that, check all avenues to make sure that it's gonna work for you and be the best option. But you fill out that form, have your advisor sign it, they will pass it to the dean, and then the dean will get it to the registrar's office and we will process them. I also just wanna state that there's probably gonna be a big log of them coming in during the term. So just give us some time, even if the final grade is out there as a letter, letter grade that you received, know that if you have that form turned in, we are gonna get it done. Just allow us to do it. We're uh, working through this COVID time as well to where we're in and out office, splitting up, keeping the office to a minimum to meet all CDC requirements and just work with us and we're gonna get it done for you. Okay, so tell me what the deadlines are for completing this form. Okay, so if you're a student that is actually graduating this term, you your grades will be live, I believe on the 20th, if I'm not mistaken. And then, so you'll have the option of doing it through the 22nd, the 20th through the 22nd. That is a very fast turnaround. However, we wanna get this going. So we get your degree conferred on the 23rd, even if we don't get your form complete by then and you have it turned in, as long as you qualify for graduation, you're still going to pass or graduate and have no troubles there. We will do those forms as we can and get them out to you when we need to get them done. And then for students who are not graduating this term, you actually have through the 27th of May to June 3rd. So there is a longer time frame in there for you to be able to work with your advisor. We did that not only just to get the graduates done, but also to let the advisors kind of use their time towards the graduating seniors initially. That way we can help get them on, get the transcripts official and out the door for them to do jobs or go to uh, grad school, professional school, whatever they choose. Okay, so we are only accepting those forms, the pass option form during that time period though, correct? Yes, that is correct. We do not, we cannot take them early. The main point of this is that we want to have the students have the uh, appropriate time frames to see their actual earned final grade. We don't want to make a student or have a student come in and say, I want the pass option, but then realize they did really well and make a B or an A and say, well, that could have boosted my GPA. I shouldn't have done that. We just okay, want you so to have the right time frames. So you mentioned GPA. How does the pass option impact your GPA? it does not impact your GPA. So there's gonna be earned hours only with the pass option. It's also considered a, a letter grade of S. So pass option and S grade are the same thing. So there's no impact on GPA, quarterly, cumulative, either one. It is just gonna to count towards earned hours. So each degree has 120 plus hours for undergraduate student you will get those three hours or whatever amount of hours you choose as an S grade to go towards that, but no impact on GPA in any way. So how does it impact deans or honor rolls? Well, it, I highly recommend for each case, the student needs to go out to the university catalog and look at the rules associated with each one of those honor rolls. S grades do not count toward those honor rolls. Uh, each of those honor rolls require at least nine hours of letter grade courses. So if you only had nine hours and you take an S grade for three, you will remove your eligibility for that. But if you were in a situation where you had 12 hours and 
three of those hours you decided to take as an S grade, you may still qualify pending if you reach the other requirements. Okay, so what grades qualify exactly for the pass option? I know it's different for undergraduate and graduate students, right? Correct. So if you're an undergraduate student, the letter grades of A, B, and C can qualify for the pass option. If you're a graduate student, the letter grade of A and B are the only grades that can qualify for that. And just so we clarify that, if you're an undergraduate student and you receive a D, that does not have the option of going to the pass option. Or vice versa, a graduate Correct. student with a Correct. C. C or D do not qualify for pass. So how do students, there is a process that they have to go through to get this pass option. Um, fill out the form. What do they do after they fill out the form? I guess, first of all, where do they get the form? Okay, so if they go onto the website, um, even you can go from our, the main Louisiana Tech website that we, that, uh, your office hosts, or even if you go out to BOSS and try to log into BOSS as a student or a faculty member at this point, we have a link on there as well that will link you to that uh, webpage for all the pass option. The form is on the very top of the FAQ page and you can get it from there and you'll see there's instructions on it. It has the process, it has the signature blocks as well for the student, the advisor and the dean. This can all be done electronically, correct? They, yes. they don't have to actually sit in someone's office to do it. Correct, yeah. You don't need to go sit in anybody's office. That, that is not what we need to do at this point. So if you go ahead and fill it out, speak to your advisor through Zoom or however you wanna to talk to them and communicate. Same thing with financial aid. I know they have chat boxes. They have different things that you communicate with them. Um, and I bring financial aid up just because it's not a signature block, but if you're receiving it, just make sure you know, if you're on borderline with your PACE or your SAP PROG with financial aid, those are things to consider how this grade will do for, or what it will do for you in the future. So anybody that you feel that can give you some valued input for it, reach out to them, but fill out the form, get it, send it to the advisor after you speak with them and they'll fill it out and then they'll forward it on to the dean and then the dean will collect them and get them to the registrar's office. Okay, so how is the pass option going to be listed on a transcript? Is it going to stand out in bright blue letters or anything like that? So the pass option is on an official transcript. It's just going to show as a letter grade of S. And we already have S as a defined grade in the legend on the back of the transcript. But also you'll note that we have a statement that this spring term is a COVID-19 term and that it's a, that goes on everybody's transcript, whether they decide to take the pass option or not. And we do that because it helps highlight that this was the term that this occurred. That lets other schools know that, you know, there may have been some things that have gone on that affected students grades, different options. So we just have that on there. I will say, if you go on boss and you look at an unofficial transcript, that is a little bit different. You will see your original letter grade on boss because it's going to be a grade change is the way it's going to process. So if you did have a C as an undergraduate student and you chose to take the S grade, you would see a C slash S on your unofficial transcript. So you'll, you'll see that change. That's all that is. But when you request to have an official transcript sent somewhere, that person will never see the original grade. So now I know that we also adjusted the withdrawal date for classes. Correct. When is that withdrawal deadline? It is this Friday the 15th. So we adjusted that out a few weeks to allow students more time right before they go into finals to make sure if they wanted to get out of a class with a W prior to going into a grading situation that they didn't want to take for this term, that has been extended out. And we have that published out for quite a few weeks at this point. So what about an incomplete? If I claim an incomplete for, for this quarter, um, do I have an extended time period to be able to complete that work before the grade is applied? Correct. But also remember that any incomplete grade is also a contract between you and the instructor. So you'll want to talk to them. There are extensions on those I grades. And I'm actually pulling that up right now to give you the exact date on that. I believe it's October 1st. Okay, that sounds about right. I knew it was into the fall term and it is on this FAQ page. So thank you very much. 
but do work with your advisor on, I'm sorry, your instructor on that because it is a contract and you do need to meet qualifications that they're looking for. That also just, that protects you as well as a student because then you know exactly what your defined elements are that you have to complete in order to get that grade where you want it or need it. So it is extended. Typically it's only six weeks into the next term, but that has been extended out to that October date. Okay. So what if I'm set to receive a letter grade of D? Do I have any options for the pass? If you don't take the extended W date, no, you don't. Undergraduate or graduate students with a letter grade of D would not have an option. I always do recommend speak to your instructor and see if there is something else that maybe you missed that you can make up or anything like that. It's always worth asking. Just make sure you've done your part as well. Um, but if you do receive that D, that is the grade you're gonna get, that is correct. So if I'm on academic probation this term, if I use the pass option, what's gonna happen for, for am I gonna remain on probation or can I get off? Well, it'll depend on how many pass options you take. I mean, if you wanna take one pass option out of three courses or if you take all three, we're still gonna run academic suspension probation the same. Good news is if summer quarter is always a, kind of a free quarter to come back and go back to school, even if you uh, do have a suspension on your uh, time frame to be suspended for a term or so, you have the option of coming in for summer and that's, that has always been there to where you can make up for that deficiency. That way you get right back on track for fall. But I'll also say, I've spoken to the deans and the associate deans, they're gonna work with you. They always do, um, never doubt that. Please reach out to them, they will help you. And they also understand they're going through the same thing this term that you're going through to see how does this all work? What difficulties have we had? I mean, they've experienced them too. They'll be there to work with you. So never forget, use your resources and that's what we need to do. Okay. So We've talked a lot about how the pass option can impact your GPA or your status, your satisfactory academic progress, um, those kinds of things. But if a student is going to graduate or professional school, say they're going to med school or vet school or law school afterwards, what can the pass option do? It depends upon the, the institution or university that you're be going to or whatever professional school that is something to heavily mention to your advisor. If you are planning to go to med school and you know the med school you're looking at requires a B or better in some of these courses, if you receive a B, but you decide to take that pass option, the official transcript that institution is gonna get will not reflect that B. So they may make accommodations for that term. I cannot speak for another institution, but I would highly warn against making sure you understand what you're doing with this grade change because once you change it it doesn't come back out of that s option or pass option anymore that would be my recommendation is do your research kind of plan ahead um i never thought i'd be where i would be so just remember going forward with that stuff that you that this isn't just a decision for this term to kind of chalk up and say oh you know we'll just we'll take the pass option and just move on it may come back and that's just something you got to consider and that's something your advisors will help you with as well but it may give you a negative impact if you take that option um, of where you had a b and you go to pass and they that professional school won't be able to see that so tell me you just you kind of just mentioned it mm -hmm. but if i choose the pass option can i take it back no. can i so if you go to the pass option and even in the form, that form is kind of built like a contract. That's, that is the direction that uh, that grade goes. Once you choose to go to pass option or letter grade of S, it will not have the ability to revert back. Okay. How long is it going to take to show up on my transcript? You mentioned earlier about transcripts and how there might be a little lag on the unofficial transcript. Right. So, I cannot give you a definite time frame because we don't know what kind of volume we're going to experience with this coming in. I would expect a kind of a heavy volume and, and the way, you know, right now we don't have student workers to help us in our office and different things, just whatever things going on. Um, I can assure you it's going to be done. It may not be done tomorrow, 
but we're going to do it as fast as possible. And we're, we're changing people's workloads and shifting in and out of things as the graduation and different things that are happening, even though we don't have a ceremony, we still have to process everything. So everyone gets their degrees. So it's, it's not a, a free day for us, but we will get them processed as fast as possible. Um, our graduating seniors are going to be our, that's going to be our priority to be honest, just because they're going out for grades and different things like that with professional schools, but as fast as possible. And I just don't want to set a date to it because I, I can't guarantee that it'll be done by a date, but I can promise you the people in the office I'll have, we're going to jump on it as a team. It's not just going to be one person pecking away at it. We're going to, we're going to jump on it and get after it as fast as possible. Okay. Um, so if they opt for a pass option in one class, do they have to do it over all of their classes or can they pick and choose? Yeah. So it's, it's optional to you per class. And just remember that when you fill out the form, it is a per class situation. You can use that to your benefit. You know, if you had a class that you had a C, but you have two other classes with A's, yeah, that's, you know, you'd make your own decision, do what you wish, but you can just say, I only want that C to be a pass option. Or you could say the entire term, you want pass options for it. Whatever you decide, but please consult with all parties involved that affect you as a student to include financial aid or whoever else you need to speak to because that decision, any input's going to be good. It's worth at least hearing and trying to figure out what you're going to do. Okay. So do you know how the pass option impacts the visas of international students? That I do not. I would have to loop Jay Ligon on that one and reach out to our international office. Um, that is something I don't know that may change per the country they come from, the, each student. I, I don't want to speak on that one as a whole because I do not know, honestly. So I will add that the email address for the International Student Office is iso at latech.edu. If you're an international student, please email um, the folks over there and they can help you out with the impacts that it will have on your visas or your, your GPA or anything like that, that they'll be able to help out. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. If you're a graduate student on probation or suspension, or you've been conditionally admitted, how is the pass option going to impact your standing? If I would get grad school, grad admissions in that portion. I don't want to speak for them on that part, but I would say they're going to take it a case by case scenario to help each student as well, just like the associate deans would do for undergraduates or graduate students. But the grad school will need to be involved with that as they run the reports and check probation suspension. It is my understanding we're going to run it as normal at this time. So even if you're flagged for probation or suspension, do reach out and ask if there's options or, you know, what's going on. We're all aware of what's going on in this term. So we will help any way that we can. So if I'm taking another class at another university, um, if I want to transfer it back, can I ask y'all to transfer it to a pass option when I bring in the class? No, it goes per institution. So everything at Louisiana Tech, we do have control of and we can assist with. But anything coming from an outside institution as transfer work, we are going to go by that university's rules for this term. We're not the only university in this situation. And I know each one's kind of making their own decisions. We're all pretty unified. We're trying to do the same thing overall as far as doing the pass options, but they will help out. Um, whatever they send us on an official transcript is what we will transcribe to our student record. And that's what we have to do. And it's what we've always done. So we're also sending our grades over. So if you take an S here and you happen to transfer it to another university, it's going to appear, appear as an S on their transcripts as well. That is correct. Yes. If you choose the S option, it's going to go out as an S and the way universities work uh, or should work, we will all transcribe what is on the official transcript. We don't have the right to change somebody else's official transcript. Okay. So are there any other frequently asked questions that y'all have been having come into the registrar's office that we haven't touched on today? Not really. Um, that has really touched a lot of them right there. Um, just remind people, go through the process, speak to your advisor, 
and get as much information as you can before making a final decision on this. We can help answer anything. And if we miss something here, I am more than happy to readdress this this way or an email or however we need to do it. Um, if we haven't hit on a question, I'm glad to keep answering them as we need to. Okay, so thanks Josh for joining us today. And we appreciate all the work that y'all have been doing in the registrar's office. I know that it, it has been a challenging quarter um, for everybody on campus, but especially those areas that that touch students so closely and um, grades are one of those areas where I know that our students tend to stress. Um, and, and so I know that y'all have been dealing with students with empathy and we all appreciate that. I, I, I thank you for that. No um, problem. So thanks everybody for joining us today. If you have a question that we have not covered today, I encourage you to ask it in the comments below and we'll get to it with Josh either in another video or in writing as soon as we can. Thanks for, for being with us today and we look forward to talking to you again.